Jason in Austin. Yes, sir. How you doing? Pretty good. Um, I have actually two questions. I just kind of stumbled on this uh, uh, TV show here, and uh, I wanted to ask you guys, obviously you guys have the atheist experience. What is the purpose in life for an atheist? Well, well, what do you mean by purpose in life? Because as far as I'm concerned, I give my life whatever purpose and meaning and direction I want. Right, right. Like, for example, for any to know the purpose of something, whatever, like a person who built a car, if I walked onto a car, I wouldn't know its purpose unless like, I had an owner's manual or explain the purpose, what does what. Well, see, the thing you is, guys, the thing is not, y yeah, you're, you're talking about... Oh, a car was in, in, in crafted for a purpose, um, right? And but there's another connotation, which is what is the purpose of this car? And I've seen cars for which the purpose is to drive, and others for which it is to be a planter for potted plants sitting out in front of a building, and for others it's a decoration, and for you know, for other, the, the, we imbue purpose onto things now. If you want to look at it as what is the purpose that is imbued in humanity externally in the same way of the car being designed, then it's as far as we can tell to pass on our genetic code. That's the process that evolution has given us. But we can give our lives whatever meaning and purpose we want. Okay, so in other words, you guys gravitate that evolution is real and true and validated. Of course. Don't you think evolution is true? Well, microevolution maybe, but macroevolution. No. Wow, I. It's uh, okay. I'm. I. You know. I realize that there are people out there who just uh, fall into this trap of making these distinctions. But uh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, in, in, I mean in the thing you the thing you just asked is a non sequitur because. Uh, uh, you know, the reason we think evolution is true is that basically it's the recognized explanation by biologists for how the diversity of life came about. But it's got nothing to do with explaining now that we're here, what should we do with our lives? Right, right. I understand. And, and that kind of was a topic that we just kind of branched to, and we can maybe talk about it if you guys give me the grace on the show. But uh, I wanted to ask another question. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Uh, do you guys uh, believe he was a real person? I don't know. I think oh. that if uh, if Jesus if Jesus was a historical figure, then the Bible is probably about as accurate as Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Uh, it, it could be based on real historical facts, but, uh, but there's no reason to believe that any of that water to wine, walking on water, rising from the dead stuff ever happened to anybody. Yeah, and I, I don't know uh, whether or not there was a historical figure that it was based on or several or whether it was, I don't, I don't know, and I don't know how we can know. I know that um, uh, a friend of mine, Richard Carrier, is currently using Bayes' theorem as a model for demonstrating uh, a way to determine the probability of historical events, and he's actually using this to evaluate uh, the probability that Jesus was a historical character. But let's just say, um, for the sake of argument, that uh, it's likely that there was a Jesus character. What difference does that make? Well, it, it, it makes a big difference because either, you know, because, for example, just saying the Bible says that Jesus says, I'm the only way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No and man he, comes to he, Father God except through me. Yeah. So either Jesus was the biggest liar, the biggest deceiver ever known, or he is like what he was saying. You know, no, so no, 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 no. Those aren't the only options at all. I, I conceded for the sake of argument that there was a real person there. That doesn't mean that anything that's recorded about that person is actually accurate. Maybe that's something, that's words that somebody put into his mouth. But maybe he was a liar. Maybe he was a lunatic. Maybe this is legend. How can you tell the difference? You, we can't even demonstrate that the guy existed, and yet you're saying the only two options are that either he was a liar or everything he said is true, and now we all of a sudden have to accept that. That's absurd. You don't use that, you don't use that same criteria for alien abductees, do you, who tell you their stories? Is that the only option? Is that, that they're either lying or that it's true? So how do you know 
what can you believe in this life? Can you believe Darwin? Do you believe like what he, uh, what's written about his beliefs or what happened with him as far as his Dar development? Darwin's beliefs as such aren't really of interest to me. The, the reason that evolution is, uh, is treated as true at this point is because uh, it made testable predictions which people could then study and then potentially contradict and it turned out to be accurate. I mean, like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with ring species, for instance. Have you heard about this? Uh, can you elaborate? Well, okay, so uh, one of the things that, uh, that people have discovered when they study is that uh, there are these islands where uh, you have similar species, like, like I guess finches would be one of the examples, where... Um, the neighboring finches, as you go around the island, can all mate with each other, okay? okay. But when you get all the way around the island, because there's been drift, uh, it turns out the last species in the group has changed so much that it can't interbreed with the first, which means that it's actually a speciation event, a change in actual species. I mean, it's so, stuff like that that demonstrates that uh, that diversity of life actually uh, actually has natural explanations. Right. So, like, basically, based off of that logic, you would apply that blanket over all existence and say that everything was an accident, came from a cesspool, some unknown phenomenon. Let's cesspool. not identify it as a God. Cesspool. I don't think Perfect. any. Modern scientific theory says anything about cesspools. Yeah, but uh, about that. The, th the thing <laughs> is, um, taking a general principle and, and extending it out um, is a good way to begin a hypothesis. And so, while we know you made a distinction between microevolution and macroevolution, the only real difference is time. Um, given enough time, you're going to have the opportunity for all of the diversity that we see. But the thing is, but if, we're on a timeline. Uh, what? We're on a timeline, you know. We're, we're, this life we're going to be our, is going to be over soon enough for you or for me, you know. What the hell does that have to do with what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying, given enough time, your you, your view of this distinction between microevolution and macroevolution is that you're you're convinced that little changes can occur, but these little Within changes. The but with, no, no, no. Let me finish. But you you don't think these little changes can result in big changes given enough time? And that's just absurd. And the, the, the reason that we, we can say that is because once we discovered this basic principle and we went out and began to investigate it, we started making, you know, testable hypotheses. And it turns out that evolution makes predictions and not just about things like microbes and fruit flies and how they evolve and, and, and pesticides, but also in the bigger sense of, hey, if our understanding of the history of life is correct, we can go out to this area, dig this deep, and find this sort of creature. And we've done that with Tiktaalik and other examples. These are, we, we have, by the way, the, even if there was no fossil evidence, the DNA evidence alone is enough to confirm that we have all evolved from shared ancestors. Right, so let me ask you, and, and, and excuse my ignorance if, I, if I'm not dead on here, but to me, evolution is to take something simple and come to something very complex to what we have today. No. I don't know if it started no. with an oxygen atom no. and a hydrogen no. atom. That's I, not. That's explain not. Explain the existence. That's not evolution. It's not evolution at all. Evolution's not a ladder. It's a tree. Well, you you can climb a tree. <laughs> okay, sorry for the bad humor, but what I'm saying is, if we come to a position where we say there's an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom, some kind of phenomenon happened. Let's not identify that phenomenon, but let's just say it's a phenomenon, and all of a sudden it there was life, millions and billions no, and trillions of years. No, it doesn't years say back. all of a sudden. No, yeah, go ahead. Well, let, okay, let, let me back back you up for a minute because I feel like we're kind of going down a rabbit hole. Do How did we get to evolution from Jesus, by the way? But go ahead. I don't know. Um, it's a tree. Do you feel like? Um, <clears throat> do you feel like the the concept of science is a valid one? That uh, yes. basically you can systematically investigate the world and find stuff out about what happens. Yes. Um, where do you feel like your religious belief fits in on all that? I mean, do you feel like your uh, your 
belief about what Jesus said and did is uh, verifiable in the same way as uh, gravity. Well, that's that's you get to faith there. I'm not I'm not denying right. that you believe in God. It doesn't so, take faith. I, I mean, what I'm what I'm going to say what too. I'm going to say here is no, that no, 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 it doesn't. What he said that to, to, to not to believe no, in evolution. Stop, stop. He said to not believe in God takes faith too. Do you do you believe in Bigfoot? No. Is that is that a faith based position that you have there? No. Then don't tell me mine is either. That's absurd. I meant to say to believe in evolution. No, evolution belief in evolution doesn't take faith. All it takes is an understanding of the science involved and an acceptance of reality. That that's not faith. Faith is well, the excuse. The faith is the faith. So far. Faith is the excuse that people give for believing something when they don't have a good reason. Belief in evolution is based on good reasons. It's just reality. The explanation for it. Yes, you just said that science can only take you so far. So far. Um, let me tell you about so far. So far, the single most reliable, consistent way of de determining anything true about the universe is science, hands down, unequivocally. And if you were to demonstrate some alternate way of knowing, how would you demonstrate its reliability? Why you'd have to use, what's that? Oh, science. The fact that it can only yeah, take I, you I'm so far just means that we don't know everything yet. But if you believe in a God and you're willing to, why would you accept anything on faith knowing that you don't have a good reason for it? Well, this is the thing. For me, I have a relationship with the God I believe in. What, now, kind, for you, what you, kind of relationship? Okay, for you, you may not comprehend it, but like also, for example, in the Bible, okay. there are... Okay. I, I understand Hang on. most relationships. Jason, Why do you think this answer. one is, un, is I, incomprehensible? I, I'm going to let you get to it, but this, <laughs> this idea that I may not comprehend it, are you aware that I was a fundamentalist Christian for 25 years and was going to be a minister? No. Okay. Continue to explain your relationship with Jesus that I don't understand. <laughs> okay. Like, for example, uh, in the Bible, there's signs, there's wonders, there's miracles. Um, one aspect that has happened in the Christian community in the book of Acts, and, and you, I'm sure if, with your background you've heard of it, mm. is when they waited in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak in languages that they did not uh, speak in before. Jason, and other speak in yeah. Jason uh, how do you know the story's true? I mean, I read Harry Potter, and I don't believe that Voldemort w was really a bad guy who did stuff. I'm surprised. You're surprised? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Lame humor again. I apologize. Okay. What I'm saying is, let's say that you could say that you could say the story is false. I know. I can I'm, say, I'm not saying the story is false. I'm saying I have no good reason to believe the story is true. Why do you? Because I've experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. My personal experience. But, as far as speaking okay. in a... Let's assume for a second that you're absolutely correct and that you did experience that. That still doesn't tell you one bit about whether that story was true because that's no different than saying hey I got abducted by aliens last night which tells me that all the other alien abduction stories are true you are making connections that are not logically sound well so I mean you're just denying all this but somebody could also deny evolution I'm I mean not... there's historical fact that Jesus lived the same time as popular no, uh, no it's like not Caesar Augustus no it's and not Martin. It's not historical established fact at all. That's why You're there's a question. It's not that he, he wasn't born in, in, the, in the Middle East of Jerusalem and, and the impact that it's had on the world in that area. Just the following alone. Do you think people just made up Jesus? I and believe just, that um, the following happened. The, the following, the fact that people believe this stuff, isn't in doubt. But you realize that all happened centuries later. No, they, they, they followed him after he died. They followed him during his life. And you know this from this what source? And you know this how? From the history of... No, of, no, 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 no. There's, and, no. there's no history that I've, talks about the disciples and people believing in mass crowds. And there's actually not a single extra-biblical source that even references Jesus that is contemporary with his supposed existence. Not one. What I'm saying is that there's history of the development of the church. Yes, there is. When yep, Jesus that lived part is true. all the way to no, where we are now. No, not from, not from that point. I'm if sorry. I'm Bible sorry a, that you just don't know your history. Book. What? Well, no, if you, if you believe the Bible, then you have a, a source of documented history. Well, shit, why didn't you say so? <laughs> hey, why didn't you just say, if you believe God exists, then God exists? 
Well, I'm, my, I'm questioning you on why you believe the Bible. And you're coming back with, well, if you believe the Bible, then it's true. And I'm still asking you, why would you believe the Bible's true? Where is the independent verification of the accounts that are in that book to demonstrate the truth of the claims? I, b I believe it's true based upon, uh, of course, I believe God is real <clears throat> based on faith. No argument there. Okay, I then the because Bible's of what it says in the Bible. Of the then, why, then why? Then why? the amounts of documentation of all these Jason, different books. Jason. Like in a court case. Jason, then if your belief is based on faith, then why are we having a conversation? Because, well, let, me, let, me finish the let, let, me finish, let me finish the question. The reason I ask why we should bother having a conversation is because clearly you think that it's okay to just believe something in faith, on faith, and I do not. And I don't have the experience that you've had and evidently you're admitting that you cannot demonstrate the truth and reality of your God to anyone else, which is kind of the point of having these conversations. I freely admit and have admitted from the beginning, there are people out there who believe on faith. They can't prove it to anybody else, and I can't prove that their faith is wrong, and so those conversations are pointless because those people are, by definition, gullible. Well, for example, evolution is a proven theory, nothing more. It takes faith do you to know believe what that it is. Do you know what theory means? 100% accurate. Go ahead. This do you know you. what theory means? What does it mean? Uh, theory uh, is basically, I, I mean, do you know, have you heard of the theory of gravity, for instance, or the germ See, theory of diseases? Gravity is not a theory. That oh, is yes, law. it is. <laughs> okay. It's a law. What okay. goes up comes down. That's Jason. A law. There's no debate. There's no argument about no, that. No, no. Well, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. A theory is a framework of explaining a set of observed facts. Uh, you have, um, you know, the, the law of gravity is not a graduation of the theory of gravity. Uh, there, there's a theory of gravity which is, which is conceptually stating that different things are drawn to each other. And the law of gravity is just a description that comes from the theory of gravity. There's no higher term in science than a theory. A theory is a, a framework which has been tested and understood to explain observed reality. When you say it's right. just a theory, you might as well say that, you know, uh, we're, we're living in just reality. Well, there's many theories is what I'm saying. But you guys have came to accept I tell you that what, evolution is the first sure There are many theory. theories, uh, is, like germ is, theory of disease. How would you explain existence? And then I, then I would have a question that would, and then I would love to How would you feedback. explain God? Well, no, no, hang on. Hang on what okay. I'm saying is I believe God is the cause. And, and what's the, the cause effect. of that? There is not one. God okay. is the cause so of you cause. Think, so you think that you've got this term, which is the end of all explanation, and once you get there, you just say, nope, I don't have to explain anything. Right? There's a time where you can't explain. Okay. Well, for example, how do you know that's not the, the question I asked you. Then how do you no, know no, no. that's not the universe? When you get to the point where you can't explain, <laughs> the answer becomes I don't know, not I know it's God. Well, no, it's belief. I mean, I believe. I don't it's give God. a rat's <laughs> ass about belief. I care about reality and what can be demonstrated to be true. I mean, so you, is, you do not understand science in the slightest because, as Russell tried to explain, theory is the is the pinnacle it is the height of science it is the goal of all hypotheses to if they could think become an established theory this is not just something that somebody pulled out of their ass there are not competing theories with regard to the diversity of life there is the theory of evolution which is the established scientific theory and then there are all these other things out here the like creationism. creationism that's not a theory that's because Cre you don't debate that. Creationism is not a theory. In other words, for example, creationism is just stuff right that's now. made up. Hang but on, what I'm saying is hang no, on. For example, hang, I'll let building. you do your, Jason. I'll let you do okay. your example. Do you understand that creationism is not a theory? What is it then? Uh, it is a, a hypothesis conjecture. at best. A theory is something that has been tested and confirmed. It is. It is like it got its damn diploma. <laughs> Christianity is like I'm getting ready to go to preschool and I left my lunch at home. Nice. So, okay, let me ask you. The building you live in now, which, which by the way, you haven't answered the question of how existence began, but I guess the Neither answer is you. you don't know. 
I, I'm happy to say that I don't know how things <laughs> began to exist, and I'm not going to pretend that I do like you are. Now, well, ask your question about the building. Okay. The you, building you're in right now, do you know who built it? No. Okay. So just because you don't know the builder doesn't mean there isn't one. Oh, I, you know what? by seeing the building alone, Jason, you can establish there Jason, was a builder. Jason, I'll concede that there was a builder here. You know what, more? Let's say builder, because there's probably a lot of people, based on all the information that we have from looking around at other buildings, probably a lot of people built this. Um, but it's possible that there was a single designer and architect, but you know what I can do? I can go down to City Hall and I can find out the plans that were filed there and actually find out who did this. And if I can't, I'm still not justified in assuming that this building didn't have an architect. Well, you would be unjustified you, you, to, you know to assume that a, a bunch of concrete laying on the floor evolved into a building. Exactly. That would be exactly. retarded. Exactly. It would be absolutely just as stupid as proposing that a magical being put it all together. But let me explain to you the difference between your building and creation as you were, you were going to get to in a moment. A building needs a builder. Creation needs a creator. Well, guess what? It's not creation. It's reality. A building... We, all of the evidence and every single example of what we identify as a building is known to be built by someone, is known to have been designed. We do not contrast designed things and undesigned things by their complexity or by their apparent function. We contrast design with nature. This building does not naturally occur. There is no reason to think that this could na naturally occur and all evidence points to everything that even appears to be like this being designed intentionally by a mind. That is not the case when you get to living beings which are natural and reproduce and follow natural laws and chemical laws that are self-replicating. It is also not the case with the broader universe because first of all you don't have another universe to compare it to so you can't contrast it with anything. But all of the evidence points to the conclusion that we need to look for natural explanations because, first of all, we can't test the supernatural explanations. Second of all, they do not provide any explanatory power. It is trying to solve a mystery with a mystery. <clears throat> so let me ask you this. Let's just take, the, from my understanding of the theory of evolution, it started from little to nothing, whether it be a hydrogen atom, an oxygen atom. I need a third hand to face palm right now. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, what, what is the ex theory, theory explanation for existence? For, you're, for you're, asking, you're asking for what is the solution to the question of abiogenesis, and the answer is we don't have that solution yet, but we have people who are working on it and who have demonstrated that at least in theory it is possible for living matter to arise from non-living matter under the right circumstances. I'd so, recommend that you go to Wikipedia to start with and look up abiogenesis, which is distinct from evolution. Evolution deals with what happens after life is there. It's, in, it's undeniable the two are tied together. I'm not making that claim. Okay, so billions, trillions, quadrillions of years go by. We're at the pinnacle of mankind, and we find out we still don't know what going on here. Yeah, so and why, doesn't that suck that we don't know everything yet? Why does that give us the right to make shit up? Well, uh, that's what I'm saying, though, but why would we just, why would we just say there is no God based upon our ignorance or, or saying that... Did I say that? Why? Also? I didn't say that. Did either of us say that? Right. But well, you're, you, say, you're you, saying you, for sure you... you say there's no God, right? No, yeah. as an atheist, I say I don't believe that your God exists. Can you prove it? Oh. Oh, it only so, took us 40 minutes to get there. But Well, at least it didn't take us millions of years. Yeah, and you know what? You still don't know. No, I know there's a God. Because How do you know? You no How do you know? I mean, I mean that's, that seems to be, are you sure you're not being a bit hyperbolic with your language there? What do you mean you know there's a God? How do you know? I know for sure from personal experience there's a God. So are you saying that okay. you're infallible? No, 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 no. Hang on, right. stop. I asked how you know, and you replied with, I know, bam. I want to know how you know. Well, of course there's faith, but that ain't acceptable. Listen, I know that's, we need that's three true. hands on your head. <laughs> that's true, right? You, can, you cannot know what, anything by faith by definition. What I'm saying is that That's like saying I know because it, I felt it in my balls. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, listen, and there's things you may know by feeling in your balls that have happened, whatever it may be. But what I'm saying is that, yeah, based upon a feelings and experiences that you have, you could identify whether you want to say God, whether you want to say creator, whether you want to say phenomenon, whatever the label you want to put on it. When, I, when there's been a, an experience in my life that it could not scientifically, could not uh, be uh, explained. For example, so, me so being, in other words, when was, yeah, when, whenever you. something happens to you that you don't understand, you just say, well, must have been magic. I mean, you just asserted <laughs> no. that science not only, you, you said, Science cannot explain. How the hell did you decide that? With, with me, with me using the Bible as my foundation, which you, you still haven't established why you would, which you still haven't established why you would know that it's true. Okay, but let's just say I believe it's true, whether it is or not. I know you believe it's that. true, but Matt, right. Matt asked how you know it's true. So okay, that, that's what I'm gonna get to. Well, no, 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 taking... no, 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 because the last thing, which is important is that you just said you had experiences that science cannot explain and therefore you attribute them to God. That is by definition the argument from ignorance fallacy. It is the premier example of the argument from ignorance fallacy. I don't have a scientific explanation so I'm going to go with a supernatural explanation. That is utterly illogical and irrational. Okay, but we don't have an explanation for, crea uh, for existence. Correct, so, so don't pretend like we do. Well, okay, right. I'm just saying what I believe and display what you believe. But you asked, what is my experience? That's what you asked. My Did we? experience is... Yeah, at some point, okay. I'm sure, in this <laughs> year-long call. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my, why we got two hours. We're only an hour in, my <laughs> believe it or not. My experience is... Uh, welcome to the atheist experience, right? My experience is come in the book of Acts when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they spoke in another language that they never spoke. So that has happened to me and my personal belief. Not just me, but many people I know. In fact, many people I have led to uh, receive the Holy Ghost with speaking in another language that they never have. Honey, call Jerry DeWitt and have him call into the show right now if he has time, please. I'm getting ready to get a, get okay. a Pentecostal minister on here who <laughs> did speak in tongues and can still do it on command. Um, he, he would be happy to talk to you, I'm sure, about your he experience. Didn't know God. What, of course, he's an atheist. He woke up. Wow. He wow, woke up. up. Wow. Well, what, what, what do you wake up to? I mean, what reality. Do you, you wake up to reality. You begin to care about whether or not things are true. You begin to accept that sometimes the answer is I don't know. You begin to understand that just because you haven't found an explanation doesn't mean there isn't one. And just because science doesn't currently have an explanation that satisfies you, that you are not arrogantly endowed with this right to know everything because you view yourself as the pinnacle of human evolution at this point, and you realize that the best thing to do is to stop pretending like you know the answer or stop assuming that you know the answer and say, hmm, maybe my answer's right, maybe it's not. Let's investigate. How do we go about determining whether or not this actually is some kind of supernatural cause? And what, mean, how does this tie in with, with other things that we know about the brain and human interactions and things? Maybe if I investigate, I might be able to demonstrate that my stuff's actually true. But instead, I will just lazily accept that, well, science hasn't answered it yet, so this God thing must be the way to go. And the thing about speaking in tongues is that it's not actually gaining some kind of special knowledge or insight. I mean, it's not even in actual language. Yeah. It's, a, it's an acquired talent for spitting out syllables that come into your head. And when people have tried to test whether it's an actual uh, uh, language that has any meaning, people use the same syllables to mean completely different things. It is actually gibberish. It just depends. I mean, in the book of Acts, when they spoke in tongues, they other people of different languages. Jason, Again, you, Jason, you meant, the story Jason, book, you, Jason you, I swear to your God, if you mention the Acts or the Bible again without justifying it, I will hang up on your ass. Acts. Got to follow through on me. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you hit a wall.